Step 11. We sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood Him, praying only for knowledge of His will for us and the power to carry that out. Step 11, page 107. Step 11 says that we already have a conscious contact with the God of our understanding and that the tax task before us now is to improve that contact. We began to develop our conscious awareness of a higher power in step two, learned to trust that power for guidance in step three, and relied on that power many times for many other reasons in the process of working through the steps. Each time we called upon our higher power for help, we improved our relationship with our higher power. Step 11 recognizes that reaching out to the God of our understanding, referred to most simply as prayer, is one of the most effective means of, for building a relationship with God. The other means put forth in this step is meditation. In this step, we will need to explore our own concepts of prayer and meditation and make sure they reflect our spiritual path. Section entitled, Our Own Spiritual Path. The 11th step allows us to the opportunity to find our own spiritual path or further refine our path if we've already embarked on one. The steps we take towards finding or refining our path and the way we walk it, walk down it will depend to a large degree on the culture in which we live, previous experiences with spirituality, and what best suits our personal nature. Our spirituality has been developing since we first came to NA. We are constantly changing and so is our spirituality. New territory, new people, and new situations have their effect on us, and our spirituality needs to respond. Exploring our spirituality in the 11th step is a wonderful and illuminating experience. We will be exposed to many new ideas, and we'll find that many of these new ideas come directly from our knowledge of spiritual matters. Because we've developed a frame of reference about spirituality in the previous 10 steps, we find that our insight has grown along with our capacity to comprehend new information about ourselves and our world. Spiritual exploration is wide open and we will learn to find we will learn and find personal truths both in our concentrated efforts to understand more and in the most mundane details of our lives. Many of us find that when we get to NA we really need to change gods. Some of us believed in something we vaguely referred to as God, but we really didn't understand anything about it except that it seemed to be out to get us. We probably did some work in steps two and three aimed at uncovering unhealthy ideas about our higher power, and then we tried to form some new ideas that allowed for a loving, caring higher power. For many of us, simply believing that we had a higher power that cared about us as individuals was enough to get us through the following steps. We didn't feel any need to develop our ideas any further. But our ideas were developing anyway, even without our conscious effort. Each specific experience with working the steps provided us with clues about the nature of our higher power. We sensed truths about our higher power rather than understanding them intellectually. The moment we sat down with our sponsor to share our fifth step, many of us were suddenly filled with a quiet certainty that we could trust our sponsor, trust this process, and go forward. This was a moment in which many of us felt the presence of our higher power. This, along with the work we did in steps 8 and 9, implanted in many of us a growing awareness of our higher power's will for us. Questions. What experiences have I had with the previous steps or elsewhere in life that gave me some inkling of what my higher power is like? What did I come to understand about my higher power from those experiences? What qualities does my higher power have? Can I use those qualities for myself? Can I experience a transformative power in my life? How has my understanding of a higher power changed since coming to N.A.? These clues about the nature of our higher power are perhaps the primary factor in determining our spiritual path. Many of us have, many of us have found that the spiritual path of our childhood doesn't mesh with the truths we, were fi we are finding within the steps. For instance, if we sense that God is vast and open and the spirituality we have been exposed to in the past suggested that God was confined and confining, we're probably not going to return to our earlier path. If we sense that our higher power cares in a very personal and individual way about each of us, a belief system that presents a distant, unknowable alien force may not work for us. While some need to take a new path, others have found that just the opposite is true, that we, what we are discovering in the steps can be explored in more depth through the spiritual path of our childhood. It's possible that, through our step work, we've healed resentments we may have held against religious institutions, 
and as a result are able to return to those institutions with an open mind. For others, the religion of our childhood was little more than a place to hang out, a community to which we had a sentimental connection. In recovery, we begin to see how we can use our religion as our personal spiritual path. It bears emphasizing that we should never confuse religion with spirituality. In NA, they are not the same thing at all. Narcotics Anonymous itself is not a religion. It offers a set of spiritual principles and uses a concept referred to as God, a higher power, or a power greater than ourselves for members to use as a path out of addiction. The spiritual principles and the concept of a higher power can go along with the member's personal spiritual path, path that he or she follows outside of NA, or those principles and the concept of a higher power can serve as a spiritual path, path all by themselves. It's up to each member. Some of us get to this point and we just don't know. The institutions we've been involved with in the past hold no answers, but we can't think of anything that sounds like a better idea. For those with this experience, this is the point at which we embark on one of the most important journeys in our life, the search for a way to understand a higher power, page 109. In this process, we are likely to visit every place that has anything to do with spirituality that's available in our community. We're also likely to read a great number of books concerned with spirituality and personal growth and talk to a great number of people. We may commit for a time to any number of practices before settling on one, or we may never really settle on any one practice permanently. It Works mentions that many of our members adopt an eclectic approach to spirituality. If this applies to us, it's important to know that doing this is okay and will serve the spiritual needs of recovery just fine. Questions. Do I have a specific spiritual path? What are the differences between religion and spirituality? What have I done to explore my own spirituality? As we explore our spiritual path and perhaps pick up and discard various spiritual practices, some of us are troubled by what seems to be an inherent bias in NA's steps and traditions when God is referred to as having a male gender. Even more painful, some of us may feel that we don't have much support within our local NA community for our spiritual choices and exploration. It's important for us to understand that the language of NA's recovery literature is not meant to determine a member's spirituality. It's also important for us to understand that we as addicts have character defects, and sometimes some of our members will act on theirs by ridiculing someone else's spiritual path. They may even quote NA recovery literature, literature to support such ridicule. Again, NA itself has no official or approved spiritual path, and any member who claims otherwise is quite simply wrong. We mention this here because we believe it's very important for all of our members to know what's true and what's not true about NA when working the 11th step. It can be a dangerous time. If members follow a spiritual path and feel unwelcome in NA because of it, their recovery can be in jeopardy. We as members have a duty to encourage the spiritual explorations of other members, and we who are exploring need to know that we can look wherever we want for our spirituality without threatening our membership in NA. Question. Have I encountered any prejudice in Narcotics Anonymous while exploring my spirituality? How did that make me feel? What have I done to adhere to my beliefs? It's essential that we don't let our spiritual path take us away from the fellowship. Our basic text reminds us that it is easy to float back out the door on a cloud of religious zeal and forget that we are addicts with an incurable disease. We need always remember that we need our Narcotics Anonymous in order to deal with our addiction. Anything else we add to our lives can enhance their quality, but nothing can take the place of NA recovery. As long as we continue practicing the basics of recovery, such as going to meetings regularly, staying in contact with our sponsor, and working with newcomers, we shouldn't have to worry about drifting away. Questions. No matter what spiritual path I am following, am I still keeping up my involvement with NA? Page 110. How does my involvement in NA complement my spiritual journey? How does my spiritual path contribute to my recovery?